Hi, I'm Pete Rulon. Welcome to another in the series of the information you need to pass the Part 107 Commercial Drone License exam. Because of the large size of all the information you have to learn, I've broken this up into a series of modules on specific subject areas. Today we're going to talk about remote ID. Remote ID is the ability of a drone in flight to provide information and location information that can be received by other parties. The drone must, under remote ID, which is not implemented quite yet, must transmit location, speed, elevation, and a defined set of information and that can be received by other parties. The FAA, through regulations, is bringing in remote ID for your drone. Most drones flown in the US will need to transmit a range of information designed to help identify who is flying the drone, where the drone is being flown within the airspace, that type of thing, and more controversially, the location of the remote pilot operating the drone. Part 89 requires the following eight message elements to be broadcast from a standard remote identification unmanned aircraft. One, the unmanned aircraft unique identifier, Two, an indication of the control stations, that's your controller, latitude and longitude. Three, an indication of the control station's altitude. Four, an indication of the unmanned aircraft's latitude and longitude. Five, an indication of the unmanned aircraft's altitude itself. Six, a time mark. And seven, an indication of the emergency status of the unmanned aircraft. And then finally, eight, velocity. There are several categories of remote ID. Remote ID built in. This is a fairly recent addition to newer drones. And this is where the drone itself broadcasts the necessary information. Now, some of the more mature drones don't have that capability, will never have that capability. So what you're going to have to purchase is an add-on. Right now, these are scarce and expensive. This device, fix it to your drone, will still broadcast all the same information except for the latitude and longitude of your control station. So these devices attach to your drone, and if you have a Sub-250 drone, this is going to take it over the Sub-250, just an FYI. And these devices are acceptable substitutes for the drone itself transmitting the data. The last thing, if you want to fly without this or build in, you can fly in what's called a FRIA, which is typically a location that the FAA allows you to fly without remote ID. So that is called a FRIA. The FAA has to approve FRIAs and they're usually the FRIAs are driven by some of the model aircraft clubs are requiring because they also need remote ID. So what drone pilots must comply with the rule? All drone pilots required to register their drone must operate their aircraft in accordance with the final rule on remote ID beginning. So the question you could see is when operating on part 107, the drone weighs less than 0.55 grams, must it comply with the remote ID requirements? Operated under part 107, yes. Operation recreational, no. So how will the remote ID signals be sent? What do you need to implement remote ID? Standard remote ID must broadcast remote ID directly from the drone. The standard for how the remote ID broadcasting happens is left up to the manufacturer, but that proposed rule does require that the information must be accessible with a common consumer device like a cell phone.
manufacturers may use Bluetooth, Wi-Fi, or LTE, which is uh, cellular towers, direct signal from the drone that can be picked up by phones or tablets in the field. So you might get it on Bluetooth, you might get it on Wi-Fi. It's possible you could get it off the cellular signal. Are you compliant? This is a good question. The next video is going to walk you through how do you determine if this drone is compliant. If it is not compliant, then you're going to have to buy a module or fly in a Freya, and you're also going to have to go back to Drone Zone and tell the FAA that you're using a module or your drone is compliant. Finding if your drone is compliant and also broadcasting is not as easy as we wish. We put this through the test and we're gonna walk you through all the steps that you need to figure it out. Let's get to it. I'm gonna cover two different steps, two different things that you have to verify. I'm gonna help you determine if your drone is actually compliant. We're gonna find if your drone is actually broadcasting. Because it's compliant doesn't mean it's broadcasting just yet. You need to verify that it does it. It's kind of a big deal because one doesn't mean the other. Let's head over to the FAA website so we can find if your drone is compliant. You go on uasdoc.fa.gov, that's the short link, and then you'll see there a list of what's called DOC. It's the Declaration of Compliance. This is where the FAA has a list of approved drones that can be used for standard remote ID. So let's get into this. And right here, what I want you to do is I want you to go to this area here where it says filter by, and you're gonna filter by remote ID, RID. Once you're in here, I want you to go to the search bar right here. You can go ahead and type your keyword for your specific drone. Now, before we do that, I do wanna mention a bit of uh, information about the serial number because we're gonna be looking at a bunch of serial numbers in here. Every manufacturer has a slightly different way of looking at their serial number. The one commonality though that we found is that all of these serial numbers that are approved for remote ID are NCANSI compliant, which means that they are 20 characters long. This is a, a standard that the FA required for all drones that are compliant with remote ID. So you may see your drone having a smaller a serial number. It probably means that either your drone hasn't been updated just yet or that your drone is actually not compliant with remote ID. So at the beginning, there's five characters that are gonna be what we call the manufacturer prefix. So DJI, for example, is 1581 Foxtrot. That means all DJI drones that are remote ID compliant, their serial number is gonna start with that number. Commonly to all of the drones that we've seen, there's a flight controller serial number. More than likely, 99% chance your remote ID serial number and your flight controller serial number are gonna be the same. So for DJI, that's the number that you wanna be looking at. Now make sure before you do any of this that your drone is updated with the latest update on the controller and on the aircraft, all right? So from here, let's go ahead and take a look at the Mavic 3 Classic. So I'm gonna go in here, Mavic 3 Classic, right? I'm gonna type this. And then there's three different Mavics. There's a whole bunch of them that were approved. So I'm gonna click on the Classic because this is one that we have on the table right here. And you can see we have Mavic 3 Classic has been approved and then there's a serial number list it starts with 1581 foxtrot i told you this is dji's prefix and then 67 papa and then anything else from 0000 to 67 papa and then ffff so that covers all the serial numbers in here so what we're going to do next is we're going to power up our mavic 3 classic and then we're going to look at the controller to make sure that these numbers are the same first thing you do make sure you power up your drone there you go here's the little beep make sure you power up your controller and then we're going to get into the settings right here. Once you're into the app, tap in the top uh, three little dots in the top right corner, go to the about section. And then from here, you're going to scroll again, make sure you have the latest update. And then you'll be able to see here that we have a flight controller serial number starting with 1581 Foxtrot. And then it says 67 uh, Papa Bravo. Okay, 67 Papa Bravo fits within the 67 Papa Zero to 67 Papa Foxtrot. This means that this drone is remote ID compliant. Now we're not done yet. We're not done because we need to make sure that not only is it compliant, but also that it is broadcasting. If you go back to the homepage by just tapping on the screen and you tap in the top left corner, you will see that remote ID functionality is normal. This means that your drone is good to go. It is remote ID compliant. You're not done just yet. If you're, to be clear, the uh, FAA doesn't allow for remote ID to be turned off. It has to be on all the time and you won't be able to take off unless remote ID is functioning correctly.
Now, if you get all the way here and you realize that you have a drone that doesn't have Remote ID included in the aircraft in itself, then you're gonna to need to get one of these a remote ID module. Now, the one that we have here is the Drone Tag Mini. This is something that the manufacturer has sent us for testing. There will be a lot more. There's actually a few more that are approved on the FA list right now. So do some shopping, find the one that works for you. But this is essentially just an on off button. You're gonna put this, you put, you can tell we put some Velcro right here. You put this on top of the drone, you turn it on, and then it's gonna start to broadcast. Now, how do you find information about your remote ID module? What is the serial number? Well, in this case, it's very simple. Right here in the back, it starts with one 596 Foxtrot, which is drone tags uh, prefix. And then it's got the long uh, NC serial number right here. You'll be able to also register it on the FA website by simply going to the drone zone, adding a new device, and then it's gonna ask you for the type of device. You would pick remote ID module, fill out the information, put that serial number in here, and then you'd be good to go. Let's go ahead and take a look at how you would deal with the FAA in this case, in order to tell the FAA that your drone is remote ID compliant. And it is actually pretty straightforward. You're gonna to go to the FAA drone zone. Well, once you're in there, you log in, or if you haven't yet, create a login for yourself. And then you'll be able to go and see your list of aircraft. If you already have some, I'll get started with that. You can go to manage device inventory. Uh, we haven't updated the Mavic 3 just yet. So I'm gonna click on that registration number here. And then on the right side, you notice that there's three little dots. If you've already registered your drone, there's three little dots right here. You click that and you're gonna click edit. And when you click edit, there's gonna be a, a question at the top, does your drone broadcast FA remote ID information? Yep, we've identified that it does. So we're gonna go right here, we're gonna click yes. And it's gonna say, what is the UAS type? Is it a standard remote ID or is it using a remote ID broadcast module? This is the module, we just talked about it. Ours is gonna be a standard remote ID. So I'm gonna click on that. And then you see it says remote ID serial number. Well, in this case, it happens to be the same as our controller serial number, which we've had in here. So all I'm gonna do is I'm gonna click save. Now you notice it starts with 1581 Foxtrot, which is DJI's prefix. I'm gonna click save and that's it. It's really that simple. Who will be able to read your remote ID information? When will it be publicly available? Well, it's September 16th. No names, personally identified information, other than the required location data or phone numbers will be publicly available. They will be available to the FAA and law enforcement upon request. Remote ID message data will include either the drone registration number on the tag or a anonymous session ID. All people can see is the serial number or the remote ID number on this drone. On December 16th, there was a remote ID deadline for manufacturers to include built-in remote ID in their UAVs. And so now any drone created after December 16th, 2022 that you purchase is going to have the technology built in. However, there is a mandatory remote ID compliance for users flying their drones in the United States, and this date is set for September 16th, 2023, so you can fly your drone without worrying about remote ID until that September 16th, 2023 deadline. So I thank you for taking a few minutes to watch this video. September 16th is coming soon. Right now, as far as I know, there is only one commercially available remote ID module. It is $300. However, if I want to put it on this drone or another drone, I can swap it out. It does not have to be dedicated to another drone. The other thing with this is if your remote ID is standard, it must broadcast or the manufacturer should prohibit it from taking off if it's not broadcasting. Obviously with these modules, you have to start them for the remote ID to be transmitted. I hope this was easy to understand. How comfortable are you feeling with the material? I hope very comfortable, but if not, Relook at the video, find another video on the internet, study the questions in the little app that's a, that I've recommended for your phone, 
do what it takes to be comfortable. Thank you for your time. Like, subscribe, so you don't miss when I post a new video.